right, this is problem 7-25. Um, that would be first here. We go all three by diagram of the beam. Um, so I'll walk the set for this beam. We have a this. Um, we have a force of A going up. That's going up. We have a force of B going up. Like this. And we have this the force of A and the Y. This is the force of B and the Y. There's no horizontal load, so you can put this in here if you want to, but this will be zero, this will be FAF. Okay. We have a distributed load for the first three meters. So 10 times that gives me 30 kilometers kilonewtons, and that would be going down right at the middle here. So I'm just going to do this. And again, that's going to give you 30 kilonewtons. And that's just 10 times your distance to it. Now here you have a triangle here. So if we do a rough sketch of that, like that, that's operating under a 3, that would be 10 here. The area this would be 1 half times the base of the 2 times 10, which gives me 15. So we're going to put a 15 in here. What do you 15? Now let's do the moment arm the distance from here to the center of the 30 kilodons. And then put 50, 50 from 30 would be a uh, half of 3 or 1.5. Now the distance over here, we're going to come over 3, and then we're going to go 1 third of the 3, which is another 1, which makes it 4. And then the distance from here to here would be the total of 6. Sum a moment around A, we set that equal to zero, we get minus 30 kilonewtons. I'll just make it 30 times the distance of 1.5 minus 15 times 4 plus FBY times 6. We get it to zero. Solve for FBY, and then we're going to FBY as 17.5. We get that kilonewton. Um, all we have to do now is sum forces in the y, so we get a 0, we get f of a, minus 30, minus 15, plus 17.5, we get a 0, and f of a, y, and this is we get to 27.5. Again, I'm going into a little bit more detail than we need to do. Um, the thing about this one, this is only asking for what the max shear is at c. So we really only need to look at beam from here, and I would look to the right instead of look to the left. It's just more complicated with the left. Look to the right. What I would have is this. I load here. And what? I think that's what that's looking for the line. And here, like this. Now, this distance from here over is coming in at 1.5. So that would be 1.5 meters. And we know we have a force coming up here, a B. Get a vector for A B of 17.5. Now the only thing you have to be careful with is to find out what this is here. It's 10 here, and now it's going to slowly go down. So what, to find the value here, we're going to take 10, we're going to divide it by 6, and then multiply it, excuse me, take 10, divide it by 3, and then multiply it by 1.5. And when we do that, that'll give us 5 at this point right here. So then we could, could we not say that this area is just going to be 1 half, times 1.5 times 5 and that would be the area right to there and we do that we get 3.750 and that would be going down again the, the moment on here would be 1.5 times 1 third we don't need that though so show what it is so then what is the shear that's occurring here? I got 17.5 up, I got 3.75 going in this way. So what's happening is the resulting shear is coming back up 
here, this value would be uh, 17.5 minus that, which will give me 1, 13, 13.75, yeah, 13.75. Right. So that's, that's the shear right there, so the, the shear force, I should say. So that'll be our V. Now to find out the stress, all we have to do is use the equation V2 over I T. Right now we know that V is equal to 13. We're doing that, it's going to be in the kilometer. We need to find the Q value. Now, this beam, which looks like this, we need to, uh, to, to find the center of that beam. Um, we'll draw a rough sketch of what the beam is going to look like. This is a beam, um, we got one of the this way. Point one five oh this way. The thickness is point thirty or point oh three. This way and one hundred and fifty this way. And Okay, now to find y bar, we'll try our y bar from this line up. We can say y bar is equal to this area here, which will be 0 0.150 times 0 0.030 times 0 0.075. Again, that's from here up to here. Now we're going to find the distance from here up to this centroid, so we're going to do plus 0 0.150 times 0 0.030 plus 1.5, that's supposed to be a 5, doesn't look like it, plus half of that, which will give me 0 0.165. 165. Divide it by the total area, 0 0.150 times 0 0.030 plus 0 0.150 times 0 0.030. When we do that, we will get a y bar of 0 0.120 or, or 120 uh, millimeters. All right, so now we got this. Now what we need to do is find the value of Q. Um, now the thing to recommend to keep your life easy here is when you do Q, that means is we know where the centroid is here. We know that this distance is 0 0.120. To find Q, you're going to be a lot easier to find this area here than to try to do this as two pieces. So I can say Q in this case will be 0 0.120 times 0 0.030. That's the area. And the distance from here to its centroid is going to be 0 0.006. It's going to give me my value of Q. Now that value of Q, um, let's see, what, is going to give me 2.16 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's meters cubed. Now to do I, you're going to do a parallel axis theorem. Um, so I'm going to do a 1 twelfth times 0 0.030, doing this piece first times this high to 0 0.150 and we get to cube that and I multiply it by the area 0 0.030 times 0 0.150 times the distance it is from its centroid to this centroid which would be 0 0.120 oops sorry 0 0.120 minus 0 0.075 Okay, we'll square that. All right, then plus, and I'll continue on. One twelfth. We'll do the upper one times its base, which is 0.150 times 0 0.030 cubed plus the area, which is 0.150 times 0 0.030 
times the distance all the way up to here, subtract this, which we said earlier was 0.165. We will subtract 0 0.120. We will square that. That's going to give me a total moment inertia. If we run that number, you're going to get 2.7 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, at this point, you're ready to do your calculation. So T max at that point is going to be your V value. And we should our shear was 13.75. So 13.75 times 10 to the third. That's your V value. Times your Q value, which is 2.16 times 10 to the minus 5 over I. And I, in this case, is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 5. And then times your thickness. And the thickness is going to be right across here, which is going to be 0.030. And that's going to give us a value of 3.667 times 10 to the 6. And that's going to be, a war you can, that's, that's value, and that's going to be newtons per meter squared. Or you can say 3.67 mega pascals. All right, so not too bad. Um, only complicated thing on this one is you had to use a parallel axis theorem. Okay, then to draw your element, make a rough sketch. Again, this is kind of rough, but it gets that job done. Okay, and then what you could do is you draw on your shear. You can draw your arrows coming down like this. Um, okay, here it's going to go the opposite. On the bottom, it's going to come back across, and then on the top, it's going to go up like this. So that'd be the three sides, and you could you could actually sketch this over if you want to, like that. That's kind of what it looks like. That's kind of what this the item would look like. So, all right, there you go.